today we will be discussing on defense strategies that we need to provide in cyber security as days are progressing the entire world is getting digitized we are having a lot of computer networks that are being connected every organization is having its own digital infrastructure and it gets connected with the individuals so as to get the information or share information or carry out some financial transactions in addition to that every government across the world is also getting digitized and maintaining national information defense information all such very crucial things also in digital form in brief the digital systems which are composed of so many computer systems softwares tools technologies network related communication equipments and all these things are under maintaining the digital data where adding deletion and updation is taking place or they are sharing data the data will be in the in short form it is get transmitted government because some of scrupulous the elements across the world there will be threats for this data either as a mere or sheer thrill or because of some financial gain or by making use of uh, existing uh, free tools on the internet or to actually spoil the people and uh, organizations are posing threat to individuals or institutes or governments to overcome this threat it is always important for us to check what are the possible vulnerabilities or weaknesses that are existing at human level or software level or configurable and so on and come out with uh, some defensive strategies and techniques to address them at the end of the show our objective is to maintain the confidentiality of data where we address uh, data as well as privacy and we have to ensure integrity data integrity and stem integrity and we have to ensure that availability of the computer resources and facilities shall be provided at right time so in order to do these things it becomes very crucial for us to understand what are the different uh, categories of uh, cyber attacks that are taking place we have to keep track of them we have to monitor them and also we have to come out with defensive strategies the four categories of cyber attacks are to retrieve personal information where phishing and farming are being used leakage of uh, personal information by making use of skimming side channel attacks snooping and other things and denial of services by exhausting computer resources or website defacement or slowdown of servers and other things or by making use of malwares 
which involve usage of the worms, viruses, spywares, and so on. We have to come out with strategies. If we have to come out with the strategies, we should be aware of different types of vulnerabilities, that is, uh, human vulnerabilities, protocol vulnerabilities, and software vulnerabilities, and configuration vulnerabilities. Once we understand these vulnerabilities, then it becomes very crucial for us to provide the defense strategies and techniques. Defense strategies and techniques are of uh, four categories. One is through providing access control and ensuring data protection and prevention and uh, detection means. And fourth one is the response recovery and forensics. Under defense strategies uh, of access control, the overall objective of us is to ensure that the intrusion using uh, access control should not happen. We want to prevent somebody should not uh, intrude in uh, organizational uh, computer resources or one should not uh, penetrate into the person's uh, mobile phones and uh, devices and we have to provide certain prevention against such intrusions and for that ensuring that proper access control becomes very crucial whenever we build any software we have to ensure that certain in the access control measures are being implemented in that software and these access controls ensure that access of computational resources will be granted only to authorized people and unauthorized people who are trying to introduce into such systems are denied access and we have to implement uh, as part of operating system and or the application such access controls also especially in the age of virtualization and cloud where the digital infrastructure is becoming uh, more global and less and less uh, local under that there will be possible uh, threats and we have to ensure that at operating system level and or the application level proper access controls have been provided in order to do that we make use of three steps one is authentication second one is authorization and then access in case of authentication when anybody wants to use the facilities for example assume that you are interested in using internet banking and anybody cannot enter into internet banking facility freely if you have to enter into it then as a first step you have to ensure that you are an authorized person this happens by providing authentication what do you mean by authentication the authentication actually is a provision to be fulfilled to permit or deny entry into the system if you are an authorized person then you should get entry if you are unauthorized then you should not get in to prove that you are a authorized and 
an authentic person, there is a precondition on you. That is, you have to provide login and you have to provide a password. Then, if both are right, then you get in. But if you are not providing these things in a correct manner, then you will be denied access. Once you are successfully logging in, then the next step is coming as authorization. There are varieties of uh, users will be there. There will be super users, system administrators, then officials, then end users. As a person who is interested in uh, using uh, internet uh, banking facility, as an account holder, you are authorized to use the different types of services which are meant for the account holder and you are not uh, having uh, authorization to use uh, the system admin facilities or uh, the facilities which are available to the bank officials and other things. So to provide, ensure that proper authorization has been given to different set of people, the rules are devised and they have been implemented in the software. Once you are an authenticated user, once you get authorization to use certain defined and allowed set of facilities, then the third step is getting the access. And there are so many uh, restrictions may be there, and there are some uh, the facilities which are available to you to access. These three levels of access control authentication, authorization, and access. Then you can log in, then you can fulfill certain rules, and you become authorized user. Then you can have access to the facilities which are meant for you as an user. The next strategy and technique is related to data protection. Data protection involves ensuring data confidentiality and data integrity. Data confidentiality refers to protecting information from being accessed by unauthorized parties. In other words, only the people who are authorized to do so can gain access to sensitive data. And data integrity refers to ensuring the authenticity of information. That information is not altered and that the source of the information is genuine. So using data protection, we have to ensure that data confidentiality and data integrity both are put in place. In order to implement the data prevention, we are making use of encryption, decryption and integrity check. When data is moving from the system to citizen or sender to receiver side, the sender side, the whatever message we want to send it, we encrypt it. So encryption is the process that converts data such as a document or spreadsheet into an unintelligible scrambled format so that unauthorized users should not make any sense out of it. Data by making it unreadable. So it involves converting the plain text in the message into ciphertext. And this ciphertext moves from sender to the receiver. At the receiver side, it has to be decrypted. Decryption is the process of taking encoded or encrypted text or other data and this data 
and converting it back into text that you or the computer can read. Basically, decryption converts ciphertext to original plain text using proper codes or keys. Once the data is being encrypted and sent across and decrypted and trying to get back the original message, in the entire process, whether the things have taken place in a correct manner and message which has originated and message that has been received, both are right. Like that, if you have to claim, then there shall take place some integrity check. Integrity check is a process of comparing the current state of the stored data and or programs to a previously recorded state in order to detect any changes. Means original information and received information are to be compared. To do that thing, there are some checksum and other things, so techniques are being used, knowing what is the information that is being sent. We are at the receiving end, we are only receiving the message. We may not be having access to original message. If we have to ensure that both are right, there is some technique being used as a checksum, which is allowing us. So the decrypted message along with the checksum is being transmitted then we have to look at the checksum and using it then we have to recover how it is taking place this entire process of uh, encryption and decryption of message the sender is having some message which is in the form of plain text and this is encrypted and when we encrypt it the, the encrypted message along with the checksum that is being sent this is called as a cipher text if this cipher text must be decrypted then we require the recipient's public key and recipient's private key and uh, the recipient's public key is ensuring that the set of people are authorized to use it and recipient private key is actually taking place at the individual level or at a specific entity level and this entity using these public key and private key are converting or decrypting the message into plain text and finally recipient is receiving the message this particular message which i have been rebuilt using decryption shall be checked for integrity that we are using a particular technique to check whether the received information is right in order to provide all these things lot of uh, different level uh, actions are taking place now we shall move towards the third type of defense strategy and technique that is prevention and detection these strategies are involving providing access control in the form of authentication authorization and access message encrypting and intrusion prevention by making use of uh, techniques like uh, traffic analysis or patterns of behavior like virus signature patterns of file access all such things we have to make use so intrusion detection which is very crucial in providing defense strategies 
basically requires a intrusion detection system or IDS, which is either a hardware or a software. This uses known intrusion signatures to detect and analyze both inbound and outbound network traffic for abnormal activities through system file comparisons against malware signatures, scanning processes that detect signs of harmful patterns, monitoring user behavior to detect malicious intent or monitoring system settings and configurations. So whenever the person wants to intrude the attacker to hack into any system, he continuously trying to attack the system because he tries one type of uh, attack. If it is not successful, he tries another type of things like that. The attacker may not be getting access in a single shot into the system. At that time, so intrusion detection systems are looking at this. There is a continuous attempt to enter into the infrastructure like that that pattern or traffic is being analyzed. Then they understand, oh, oh here is a person who is trying to enter into our system or here is any the organization which is trying to enter your system like that by looking at this abnormal traffic immediately they become alert and they want to take a appropriate defensive strategies and when viruses as spywares and others are also trying to enter into the system they leave the trace or signature the system understands there is something, some worm or virus is entering into the system like that, it understands. And because of firewall and other things, we may be getting the information related to that. And as soon as we look at these patterns or signs, then the IDS is going to, or intrusion detection system, it sends the signal to the computer security staff members who can take appropriate measures. And also, the people who are interested in harming, they may be either internal people or external people. If they are trying to do anything to the system, they always show it with the trial and error methods they may be attacking one software if it is not successful then they may be trying to enter into some other server it may be not successful then they may be trying to do something or they may be copying or they may be trying to get the access all such things they will be doing it all these behaviors are being detected and also some people may be trying to change the system configurations or settings and this also is recognized by intrusion detection systems and immediately they send the alert to computer security staff members to initiate certain actions the intrusion detection system upon detecting a security policy violation, virus or configuration errors, they automatically will be having ability to kick the offending user off the network and send an alert to security personnel. However, the drawback of this intrusion detection systems is that it uses previously known intrusion signatures to locate attacks and hence new threats may remain undetected. 
because these most of these systems are built by either looking at the patterns or the signature of viruses and other things and try to take the measures but if the attack is totally new with uh, no past history for the first time such attack is taking place then intrusion detection systems may not be in a position to detect and inform the security personnel it only detects ongoing attacks not incoming assaults to block these an intrusion prevention system with the interception facility is used so in brief intrusion detection for repeated attempts by looking at intrusion signatures and prevention strategy by actually controlling with interest interceptions these com in combination provides us the defensive strategy of the type of uh, the prevention and detection now the fourth category of strategies and techniques is of the type of response recovery and forensics whenever we detect any attack of virus or worms or when you say that some spyware is monitoring us then at that time immediate response measure shall be taken to shut down all are part of the system and then we have to scan for virus and other things and quarantine infected parts and to cure the system we have to apply necessary patches and then release the cleaned version of the file or software in order to take some uh, legal actions the new field is emerging which is called as cyber forensics cyber forensics is using set of tools to trace back fingerprints or of intrusions they trace back the crime and help to initiate legal actions the future is belonging to the skills and competencies in this cyber security and cyber forensics areas with this particular background now we shall discuss about defense strategies and related guiding principles it is more a human problem than a technological problem and must be addressed at different levels sorry for the typographical mistake there we shall correct security is a much a human problem than technological problem what do you mean by that means making use of making use of uh, very attractive messages luring the individuals and also through telephonic call asking the person that uh, there is some bank loan which has been approved asking him to provide uh, his uh, card details personal details date of birth and login and password cvv and other things with wonderful uh, words of uh, the convincing the cyber attackers take uh, most of the information from the user and commonly it is happening every day or they may be clicking the hyperlink which is being sent through email or 
mobile and by doing it they are entering into some fake website which is look like of a great brand and they provide all the information so such things are common all these things if you look at it they are not related to technological issue they are being done by the human beings and in negligence or with the innocence or because of greed and other things to ensure it we have to address it at different levels in the sense coaching the people bringing the awareness sending the email from the banks and finance institutes what the people have to do and what they should not do all such things bringing awareness we have to ensure this and it should be factored in an inception not as an afterthought means we have to take care of lot of defensive measures rather than trying to control the damage after the damage is being done in order to do it बैलेंस then those or why the protect uh, different levels of uh, defense but open systems always are having uh, certain threats so under this the overall thing security by obscurity which is claimed by many people shall uh, be addressed by providing the lot of verification inspection and other things so we should not blindly accept the people who are providing these things and we have have to accept any such software or hardware after diligent check and also lot verification shall be done the next guiding principles of modern cyber security practices are actually the always so 
checks about the mobile number and password and other things also shall be ensured. Like this, lot of access control at different levels and uh, different types of uh, the permissions and privileges. This must be continuously checked. In the unusual traffic, by the uh, intended uh, attacker who is trying to enter into the system of into the system trade level and The what level of security to be provided and what type of control shall be provided? How many? Verification shall be done. How many checks and balance the system and software becomes totally vulnerable? So, we have to take very careful trade off measures to ensure that security has been provided with a lot of care and with the If we have to provide the security to the computer sets and computer systems and top. either at international level or at the government level. Under these laws and under these policies of the organization, we are going to decide about to put Firewalls or the uh, different types of uh, virus uh, checking software and cleaning and quarantining uh, type of uh, systems in place. And once we are protecting our devices, yes, through. And virus scanning systems and other things, computational devices to anyone. Instead of that, we have to ensure that the proper the login and password, then authentication, then after that, privilege to use certain systems.
of the information is taking place at a well defined strategy intervals where to take the backups at institution level and we have to take up the backup and maintain in fireproof cabinet against natural disasters you have to take the backup and maintain in the server outside the institutional boundaries because of fire and short circuit and other things we have to protect the data we have to maintain some back backup based on the data is critical or not based on that we have to make the decision and maintain the copy of it outside the country to protect the data against floods earthquakes or military action by the enemies like that we have to take a different measures through policies or principles than having a multi level strategies of defense then we have to protect the resources so these are the things we have to ensure with this note we come to the conclusion of today's session and we discussed today about defense strategies we checked here and discussed about four different types of strategies one is access control second one is providing data protection by making use of prevention and detection and by making use of risk we also discussed that by looking at the vulnerabilities and other things by looking at the patterns by looking at uh, the viruses which are leaving their signatures and by looking at uh, sudden change in uh, traffic and other things and we have to be alert and we have to initiate uh, defensive measures to deny access and also very frequent checks we have to do to check that the whether person is authorized or not and also the we have to give multi level of the defense strategy right from policy angle up to the individual level we have to ensure different types of strategies we also have to use scanners and then the ids the intrusion detective systems by making all these things we can ensure that proper defense has been provided either at institute level or at in with this we come to the end of the this particular session